Hello and welcome to the first of a three-part series with fund manager Mark Slater. Mark runs various funds for Slater Investments, including Slater Growth, Slater Recovery and Slater Income. In this first video, Mark is going to talk through his checklist in terms of how he finds great growth businesses without overpaying. At the time um, this video is being recorded, we are a month away from the general election, mm. so it would be remiss of me not to ask you about it. Does the general election just add another bout of uncertainty to the UK stock market that um, has kind of dominated 2019? It does. It also offers the prospect of resolution. Um, I think since the referendum in 2016, there's been a great deal of uncertainty. Initially with Brexit, I think then with the resurgence of the Labour Party, with the threat of a Corbyn government. Those two things have put a lot of investors off the UK. Um, so there is a, a real scenario where all of this is resolved in a month's time, which I think would be very, very bullish. Um, we're seeing a little bit of that beginning to be priced at the moment, I would say. And as a predominantly there's a bottom-up stock picker, um, how does this sort of market sort of macro driven market at the moment i mean does it do you have to think more about the macro than you have have done in the past we try very hard not to let the macro dominate our thinking because primarily because it's very hard to get it right um, it's much easier to get the company right but you can't ignore major factors that are out there um, so you know we're not involved in companies which are obvious sort of political footballs. You know, we don't want to be involved in nationalisation targets, uh, businesses that could be turned upside down with a change of government. Um, we, uh, we, again, don't want to be involved in businesses where big change in, changes in the currency um, can have a significant effect on them. So we, we, we're not, we don't want to be betting on those things, but we have to be aware of them in order to make sure that we're not betting on those things. Obviously, a lot of fund managers in the UK space talk about how UK domestic stocks are a scream and buy. Is that an area that you've been increasingly looking at? And would you agree with that sort of prognosis? Uh, I totally agree with it. Um, so a, go a good indicator of that is in a, in a normal year, we've now been doing this 25 years, in a normal year, we, we might see one bid, perhaps two. This year so far, we've had six bids just in our growth portfolios alone. Um, so it's, it's miles above what we would normally expect to see. And that's out of a, po out of a portfolio of you know, between 40, 45 names. So it's a very significant proportion. And we're not looking for bid targets. Um, the bidders tend to be overseas buyers. Um, obviously, they're benefiting from the weak currency. Um, and they're benefiting, on top of that, from low valuation. So, yeah, I, I think the UK is on sale. Um, and there are some really good businesses that are very sensibly priced. Will the catalyst to make you know, the UK less unloved than it is at the moment and potential buying opportunity, um, will that catalyst be some sort of clarity on the shape and form that Brexit will take? I think the two big issues that we keep hearing from both clients and other investors are Brexit and Corbyn. Those are the two big ones. Um, my personal view is Corbyn is a much greater risk to, to UK businesses than, than Brexit. Um, so uh, both of those can be clarified very soon. Um, if they are, I think there'll be a big sigh of relief. There'll be a lot of activity, at least for a short period. I mean, this is all against a background of a pretty bleak global economic situation. So Britain isn't completely insulated from that. But I think there would be a bounce um, if uh, there were a Conservative majority government returned and they then got on with their Brexit plans. And then we've got um, the fact that valuations are low, which is a good place to start. So I, I, I'm quite optimistic, but you know, um, there is an election, things can change. Um, the Conservatives are currently ahead in the polls, that can change. Mm. Um, so, but I think the valuation starting point is very attractive in the UK at the moment. And that's obviously at the heart of your investment process yeah. to not overpay when yes. you find these great growth businesses. Exactly. Um, could you elaborate further on how you find these sorts of businesses? What are the sort of checklists that you look for? Well, the, we start off quantitatively. So we search the entire UK market for companies which are growing at an above average rate, which we can buy relatively cheaply. And that's where we, we want to compare the P ratio with the growth rate. Um, and then we look for companies as well that, on top of all these things, are generating a lot of cash. 
um, those screens eliminate 95% of the UK market. So the remaining 5%, most of which we obviously know very well because we've been doing it for a long time, we then do a lot of work and that work is much more qualitative. And the key qualitative tests for us really is the degree to which we can be confident that the growth outlook is reliable for, for many, many years to come. So what we really want is to buy a business which has some sort of identifiable tailwind that's driving the growth. Um, businesses that to some degree can make their own weather um, in what is globally still a difficult environment.